Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clifford with ACDC Econ. Pay attention, we're talking about the key, most important graph in macroeconomics. We're talking about aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now what I have for you is two different things, inflationary gap and recessionary gap, but you're missing something and that's what you need to be able to draw. You need to be able to draw the long run aggregate supply curve, figure out where that thing goes. So I'm telling you right now, the aggregate, long run aggregate supply curve is going to go in the middle on one side or the other side. Okay. Now in this one over here, I want an inflationary gap. I want to show the economy overheating. It's going a little bit too fast. We have really, really low unemployment. On this side, I want to show a recession. We have a lot of unemployment and we could be producing a whole lot more. The question is, where does the long run aggregate supply go? I need you to draw it right now. Go ahead and pause the video. And start the video. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do inflationary gap first. So inflationary gap, that concept is pretty simple. It's right here. The long run aggregate supply curve is going to go right here. This represents the quantity at full employment. Now we're actually beyond full employment. Wait, how is it possible to be beyond full employment? It's actually very possible. Remember, full employment means about four to five to six percent unemployment. So let's just call it five percent unemployment is considered full employment. Now, right now we're somewhere else. We're producing a whole lot of stuff. That means we're producing with like two percent unemployment. It means we have an inflationary gap. That concept is right there. Now over here, recessionary gap, take a look. Long run aggregate supply curve will be over here. This is the quantity full employment, Ooh, full employment. And this is the quantity we're currently at, right? That's the GDP. We could be producing more, but we're not because we're in a recession. We have 8% or 9% unemployment. And that means we could be producing more. This is the trick to macroeconomics. Once you understand the basic graphs, the net, the, everything you're doing for the rest of the semester is trying to fix the problems. That's it. That's all. So you're going to learn about monetary policy and fiscal policy. It's actually super simple. There's only two ways, except sitting around doing nothing, that we can do something. If the government gets involved and does something. Let's look at the inflationary gap first. For this one, let's say we have an inflationary gap. The economy is moving too fast. Well, fiscal policy is when Congress comes in and they can do one of two things. They could decrease government spending or they can increase taxes. Now, you already know aggregate demand is made up of C plus I plus G plus XN. Well, the question is, which one of those things are being affected? Well, in decreasing government spending, that would work right there, or this one increasing taxes would decrease consumption. Either way, take a look. This would decrease aggregate demand and put us back at long run. It would slow down the economy and avoid inflation. Cool. Now, on this side, take a look. We have a recession. If we want to get out of this thing, well, all we want to do is increase aggregate demand. Right? Shift the curve over here, put it right there. Now, how do we do it? Well, fiscal policy. Congress could come in and they could increase government spending, stimulus anyone, or they could decrease taxes. Increase government spending, decreasing taxes would mean there's more disposable income to consumers, and that would increase aggregate demand. Now, that's fiscal policy. Other thing is with monetary policy. Notice, we haven't started talking about monetary policy yet. Monetary policy in this situation is the idea if the government were to decrease the money supply. Decrease the money supply would uh, increase interest rates, which would decrease investment, right? That's one thing. And over here, the government could increase the money supply. Increase the money supply would decrease interest rates and increase investment. That's the concept. Now, it's so simple. It just makes sense, right? Fiscal policy affects C and G. Monetary policy affects investment. Same thing over here, except we're trying to affect it different ways. This one, we're trying to decrease aggregate demand. This one, we're trying to increase aggregate demand. That's the concept. Until next time.